Hi there, uh, Summit here, and it's nice to be back. And I have um, for you guys on, on my fellow Patreon supporters, my Patreon fans, my patrons. Uh, today I'm going to share um, a little bit about an approach of learning triads, triads, arpeggios in particular uh, on the guitar. And so uh, I'm going to show you kind of like how I think about it and, and how it's changed over the years, um, just my approach. And hopefully from uh, this video, um, it will help you learn the fretboard in a much more organized manner. Now, it's, it's easy, so to say, to um, you know, go online and you know, find diagrams of uh, triads and arpeggios and stuff, or like read articles or check out videos. Um, but the, the problem is that a lot of this information is disorganized, in the sense that you may find someone tell you, okay, you should play, let's say, a, you should play a G major arpeggio like that, for instance. Or they say, no, you should play that way, for instance, which is three octaves. And so, there's all sorts of ways of doing this. Um, and uh, what I'll do today is I'll show you an, a way to look at it um, systematically as much as, as best as I can. And this is the very same approach that I use to teach my uh, students that are preparing uh, to audition for Berkeley. And uh, hopefully this will help you out. Okay, so let's start. So first step, uh, we're going to start off uh, with a basic premise, which is we're going to limit it first now only uh, to... We're going to do it on C. So it means that it's on C, is on the 8th fret here. The C is on the 6th string 8th fret. And what the first thing we want to do is be able to find uh, arpeggios for one octave. So C, and there's four kinds of triads that we, I'm recommending you to check it out. So major, minor, diminished, and augmented. And this is how it goes. C major will sound like this. So it's just C, E, G, C, G, E, C. And that's one octave. And in this case, the fingering I'm using is two, one, four, one. Or I might use two, one, three, four, three, one, two, and that's one octave of C major. Now the reason I'm doing it only one octave first is that if you can do it for one octave, you can eventually figure it out in any number of octaves. So that's C major. Now, to change C major to C minor, I have to flatten the third degree from an E to an E flat. So it sounds. Now, this is keeping the same fingering. So I have major. And I have minor. Okay? From the minor version, I can change it into diminish by flattening the fifth. Then I'll go back to major, minor, diminish, and then I'll change it, go back to major again, and from major I'll raise the fifth into augmented. I probably want to do it with the same fingering. So now we have four Try it arpeggios. Major, minor, diminish, and augmented. So there's four. Now, uh, from that, what we can do uh, from that part is we have learned it in one octave. Now, the second way, the second thing is if you've learned it here, you can learn the same thing now with the root on the 5th string. Now the fingering is exactly the same. Major, minor, uh, diminished, and augmented. So you have major, minor, diminished, augmented. Now 
the reason the thing remains the same is because it's, these four strings are still tuned to fourths. E, A, D, G, they're all a fourth by E, uh, F, G, A, A, B, C, D, fourth, D, E, F, G, they're all perfect fourth intervals. The problem is that when it goes to the second string, the, the tuning of the guitar is different. We'll, we'll get into that when we go into the second octave. So, major, minor, diminish, or rhythm, and same thing here, major, are all one octave. They're exactly the same, it's just different fingering for it. <coughs> now, from this, now um, the roots on the third string, uh, sixth string and fifth string. Now if I do it now on the fourth string, if I keep the same kind of fingering, it's supposed to be here but the tuning is different, so uh, the tuning is a major third, so it means the C now is here. Again, major. Last one. I'm looking for the C. So here. But the original one was one, two, one. So first one finger, two fingers, one. So one major, minor, diminish, and augmented. Now by going through and completing. Um, three string sets of each of these arpeggios, I can actually combine combine it into a two octave shape. Watch closely. So C major is the first octave, second octave. So if I did I'm trying to keep I mean the fingering changes a bit. But this was the first octave, this is the second octave, and I just combine and they become one thing. Here I can do the same thing. So I get these fingerings. Now these are three note three string fingerings, meaning that one, there's one note here, two notes on the next string set, and then another one here. Uh, but you can also combine them in different ways. So I, I don't necessarily have to just have three strings. I could use four strings. So I have four notes and I could play one on each string. And if I did that, I would get this. A whole different set of fingerings. C, E, G, C. Major. That's here. Now if I did it on the 5th string, I get that, on the 4th string, now this introduces introduces a whole set of fingerings, a different set of fingerings, so I could initially go back to that original and then continue. That's how I get this this arpeggio. And the one here, I could have done. But I need to continue that there. Because it sounds not complete, it's not on that string. Or I could do. What's the moral of all this is that, um, well, let me complete that, but first one first, um, major, minor, diminish, augmented, and second one, major, minor, diminish, augmented, and here, major, minor, diminish, augmented. Now, uh, from all these Try it up in your shapes. You start learning about where the notes are on the guitar, and this is a very powerful way of understanding harmony and melody on the guitar. 
So what do you want to do if you really want to get into deep into this? Well, number one, be able to play it on a single root, meaning everything's the root is C. So C major, C minor, C minor, diminished, C augmented. And then go through the roots on the 6th string, 5th string, 4th string, 3rd string for those 3 strings uh, for each set that then, there then. so finish those major, minor, diminished, augmented and then after that uh, go through it in 12 keys so maybe C major B flat B flat B flat B, A, A, B, G, C. And then do the, and the next one. C, B flat, B flat, B flat, B flat, G flat, B, B, A, G, B, G, C, and so on and so forth. And by doing this again and again, you start seeing the whole fretboard uh, as different keys, different arpeggios, different triads. And so, is this an easy process? No, it's not. Is it a clear process? Yeah, it is. It is step by step. Is it possible to do this? Yes. Is it worth doing this? Yes. Uh, why should you do this um, within a certain time limit? Not sure. I think you should just take as long as you need to to get it. But um, I guess having some kind of um, timeline, you know, say I want to get at least for um, one fingering within a week or something. Something like that is very useful. So, but definitely learning the guitar in this way will help you see the whole fretboard much clearer, in a much more clearer way, and will help you with your ear training and sense of harmony, and um, hopefully even learning songs by ear, you start hearing how the different um, songs sound like, what the chords sound like. So, that's this lesson this time for you, all your Patreon patrons, thank you so much, and if you have any questions, send me a question, if you have any requests for a future lesson, send me a note as well, uh, leave a comment. Thanks so much, see you guys next time.